Hello and welcome to Skills and Automation. My name is Ash and today we are going to look at a very special requirement. That is how to dynamically select a full data set minus the top header or in other words, except for the top row. So we just want to select the data body of a data range. And the answer is not as straightforward as you would expect. Nevertheless, this is a fun piece of code and it's really helpful in pasting data one below the other. So we'll first build out the solution and then look at a few practical examples. This is a data set. All we know is that the data should start from cell A1 and the top row is the header row. We can't assume anything else. We don't know how many rows of data are going to be present beforehand. For starters, suppose we want to dynamically select this full data set. This is a very common task. The solution is to use the current region property of the range object. Let's go to the VP editor, Alt F11. This is a blank sub. Let's declare a range variable and let's assign it the current region for cell A1. Let's click out of the selection and let's programmatically select the range. Play this out and our entire data range is selected. This was the easy part. Our requirement, however, is to exclude this top row from the selection. We got to perform two steps. First, move the entire selection down by one row using the offset property of the range object. And second, we will resize the range to exclude the bottom row using the resize property of the range object. So our final selection will look like this. And we can do all of this in one line of code. I will first share the code and then we will build it piece by piece. This is our code logic. Let's deselect, run the macro and we arrive at the correct selection. That is no header row. Okay, I'll be honest here. This sequence of steps always gets me a bit confused. I tend to reuse bits of my code whenever I'm building new workflows and I'm guilty of just blindly using this particular code without thinking too much about it. And that's kind of why I wanted to make this video to really understand what's going on here. So do stick around if you want to step through the logic. So let's start the sequence again. We have determined our current region and note we are referring to the worksheets using the worksheet code name. Our step one is move the entire selection down by one row using the offset property of the range object. So the offset property will allow you to move the range based on its relative position from the starting point. So offset zero zero will be the range itself. This is the syntax for the offset property. Let's start with offset zero zero. This will just be the current region. That is the full data set. And if you want to move the selection down, we need to offset by one row. Okay, let's play this out. And a selection has moved down one row, but we have an extra row at the bottom. Let's address it in step two. So step two is resize the range to exclude the bottom row using the resize property of the range object. The resize property allows us to redefine the size of the range object that we have created so far. We can feed in the row size and the column size that we want. The current size of a range object is defined by the count of rows in it and the count of columns in it. So let's resize the range using the current row and current column size of the range. This should return us the same range. So we have the current count of rows and the current count of columns. And let's select this last range. And we have the same range as where we left off with the offset property. Great. So finally, now we want to exclude the bottom row. So we will subtract one from the total number of rows in the range. So just minus one, play this out and we have a correct range selected. If you have noticed the columns aren't moving, nor is the count changing. In that case, we don't really need to specify the zero in the column offset and nor we need to give the column count in the resize property. This should return us the same result. And finally, let's look at that mean piece of code that I had shown earlier. We can see here that we are following the same logic, current region offset by one and then resize by minus one. And I'll point out one thing though, you could first resize and then offset. You will still arrive at the same result. I will leave it to you to try it out. Okay, so that's how to select the full data range minus the top row. Next, let's see this code in action with a simple example. We have our original data set in the input sheet and we want to paste the data into the output sheet. Notice the output sheet already has the top row as headers. So we don't want to copy the header row. Let's build this code. This is a blank macro. Let's clear the data from the output sheet minus the top row. Ironically, clearing data by excluding the top row isn't that straightforward either. 
So clear the data from row 2 all the way down to the total count of rows in the output worksheet. And let's copy the range minus the header row and output it to cell A2. This is the same as our previous code. So this is what we had built earlier. Let's move on to a new row. We will copy this range and paste it out into cell A2, which is in the second row. Let's run this. The data has been pasted over. This works well. This was a very basic example. Let's see a practical use case. We won't build the next code. I have already built it. I just want to explain the application of the code. This is a scenario from my video on splitting and merging files. Our focus today is on merging the files. Here we have data in five separate files. As you can see, the headers of each files are the same, but the contents or rather the number of rows of data is different based on each salesperson. We want to loop over each file, grab the data and paste it into our output sheet one below the other. But the challenge is that we want to paste the data including the headers only for the first file and the second file onwards we want to paste just the data. Otherwise our header row will keep repeating. So this is our code and this is where we apply that logic. So what we're doing here is that for the first file, we paste the entire data, including the top row. And for every other file, we paste just the data body range, which is the code that we saw earlier. Let's test this out. The files are in our folder. The output sheet is blank. Run this macro. Go to the output sheet. And all the data from each of our file is merged together. The header row doesn't repeat. And I will leave it to you to go through this code. I will include it with the rest of the code for this video. You can test it out as well. It will run on any Excel files as long as the headers match. And if you have any doubts on the rest of the flow for this particular macro, please check out the video on splitting and merging files. All right, that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive video and I'll see you in the next video.